since posting my first video of this artificial horizon, I've had a few requests for different experiments. And one of those was to cage the unit, turn it completely upside down and release the cage just to see if it was capable of correcting a 180 degree error and how long it would take. So I'm demonstrating that now. I have tried it already. It takes about 35 to 40 minutes. So I've got this Nikon camera running on a time lapse and the gyro is being powered at 27.2 volts. From the operating manual, it states a minimum of 26.5 volts to operate correctly. So we've got sufficient power. It's operating within correct parameters. So I'll just turn it upside down. So it's now caged. I'll turn it upside down, release the cage, and upright the case again. So there you can see the gyro inside is inverted. So let's see how long it takes to correct this error. And I'll just set up this stopwatch. We can see how long it takes. So as you could see, the gyroscope had no trouble self-correcting back to level, even from the inverted position. From 180 degrees of error, it was able to correct itself in less than one hour. Now an aircraft traveling at 450 knots at airliner speeds will take 24 hours to fly around half of the Earth. So the gyro is capable of correcting 180 degrees in less than an hour it will take an aircraft 24 hours to fly around 180 degrees of the Earth. So once again, that demonstration proves that this gyro is more than capable. It corrects easily fast enough to compensate for an aircraft flying around the curvature of the Earth at jet speeds. Now, the next demonstration is going to take a bit longer. This is another request I had on my channel, and I'm going to have to do it in real time. So. The request was to cage the instrument. So it's now caged. I'll hold it caged and raise it up about 20 degrees, which I've done. I'm holding the cage. Now I'm going to turn off the power. Now I'm holding the cage until the gyro stops completely and that's going to take several minutes. So we'll just have to wait. And the question was that if I allow the gyro to spin down while it is caged and pitched at this angle, and then I return the gyro to a normal attitude and power it up, will the gyro in fact find its true level again? So we'll do that experiment. It's just going to take time for this gyro to stop rotating.
I'm not sure if the sound is coming through in the phone, but I can still hear the gyro rotating. I can still hear it rotating, I just want to make sure it's 100% stopped. Okay, it's barely audible now. And I cannot hear any sound from the gyro at the moment, so I'll just let it go for another 30 seconds to make sure. Okay, I'm fairly happy the gyro has completely stopped, so I'll now release the cage. And what I'll do is return the gyro to the level it was originally. And repower the gyro. And you can see while it's powering up, the current draw is higher than half an amp. When it gets up to the correct operating speed, it's less than half an amp. So you can see there's the current, it's stabilizing now which means the gyro is basically up to speed. And we'll just watch it for a few minutes to make sure it levels perfectly. It's just correcting a very tiny error in roll, but it's just about there. So 
So you can see once again, it doesn't really matter what the original starting position is of the gyro or the case. The gyro will, when left to its own devices, always find true level. So that's running fine now. Diving, climbing, rolling left, rolling right. It always finds true level. So I have a few more experiments I plan to do before I disassemble the unit, but if anyone has any other ideas or requests, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to try and produce that experiment for you.